Hello guys, welcome back to my world of fragrance. Today we are talking about fragrances that I no longer wear for one reason or another. I just don't reach for them. So I'm gonna go through them with little mini descriptions. Let's get into it. Now, if you have more than 100 fragrances, I can almost guarantee that you do not wear absolutely every one, which is also why I don't promote hoarding necessarily. I only have this many fragrances because I have a channel, because I'm obsessed, and otherwise I would probably just have, I would stop at 20, I would say. So here are fragrances that I no longer reach for and that I'm decluttering, getting rid of for whatever reason. Number one, Bodicea the Victorious. All of my Bodicea fragrances, I'm actually decluttering, getting rid of. I have just evolved in my scent journey. This is a brand that I find to be very expensive for what it is. Half of what you're paying for is the beautiful, wonderful packaging. I mean, I've been there. I've been there with all of these luxury brands and I'm just not there anymore. So this is Nemer, wonderful rose oud fragrance, that power Middle Eastern vibe, decidedly masculine, but yeah, finished it and will not be repurchasing and otherwise I'm selling my Bodicea the Victorious fragrances. Next, we have a Creed, and this one is actually quite dirty because it's just been sitting there on my shelf. <laughs> so a lot of fragrances that I declutter or sell or get rid of, I actually don't share with any of you on this channel, simply because I don't want to start or just hop onto this trend of buying, decluttering, buying, decluttering. I feel like it sends the wrong message about fragrance in general. Just buy things that you love, right? So at the time, I loved it, and I got it, but... Again, I've moved past Creed. <laughs> Creed is in my past, not in my future. This one is a unique aquatic fragrance, I will say. Salty, marine-like, citrusy with a violet leaf added to it as well. I can sense a little bit of violet leaf. So yeah, I, I don't have anything against this fragrance in particular. I'm just finishing it up. There isn't much left in here and like I said, I'm moving on from the overpriced fragrance categories. I would like to get more normalized. I would like to renormalize normal prices um, on this channel. But yeah, Milesime Imperial. So the reasoning behind me getting rid of these fragrances is different. It varies. It's not only because I'm trying to phase out a brand. L'Herbolario is a affordable brand. I hail them for dupes, although I'm not sure they're intentional dupes. They could be, they could not be. It's hard to tell sometimes when it's not a clone brand and they release something and the timing wasn't just right after the original release. Um, but Dolce Lissier, and I'm getting rid of Ojan by Parfum de Mali because they are in my mind, copies of the original Ambre Narguile by Hermès. So I would rather replace these with the actual Ambre Narguile, although I am over this scent. This is a cinnamony, gooey amber that is delicious. I mean, beautiful, wonderful, but I would just rather have the original by Hermès if I'm gonna have this scent at all. If you are on a budget, definitely get Dolce Lissier check it out, but you will still smell a difference in quality. A dupe will not always be just as good as the original. Sometimes it can be, but I'm saying this dupe is not, it's 90% there. Wajan, very pricey anyway, you might as well just get the MS. So the next fragrance is a fun one. It's actually gross how dusty these fragrances are, but um, they've been collecting dust, fresh, is a brand that does skincare and affordable fragrances. This one is quite nice and uplifting for spring. Honestly, I like it, but I'm going to be getting rid of it. It is called Pink Jasmine. I love jasmine as a concept, but I am not a pink fragrance type of girl slash woman. <laughs> it smells almost kind of uh, grapefruity because it's pink and it's citrusy, so it reminds you of like a grapefruit a little bit but you have a sweet floral in the background. It's that innocent, lovely pink spring floral, girly, you know, all of those things. Girl next door type of scent, although you can be a man and wear this as well. Boy next door, why not? It's, it's lovely, it's uplifting. 
It's lovely, but it's just not me. And what are we all about on this channel? Smelling like you. Find what smells like you. So this doesn't smell like me. Love it though. I think I'll just give it to one of my sisters or something. The next fragrance is a depthy vanilla. I featured it in my vanillas for people who do not like vanilla or don't want to be vanilla. I <laughs> who comes up with these titles? I come up with the weirdest titles for videos. Um, but this is called Ivory Root. It's by Serjoff. And I do not smell this after a few hours on myself. Granted, it's an EDP. Uh, Serjoffs are potent. They're meant to last as fragrances. I don't find that this actually lasts for me. And at this price point, I would rather just sell this to somebody else who is going to appreciate it. I don't reach for it because I wear it. It's lovely, snuggly vanilla, woody depth, a little bit spicy. It's probably the type of vanilla that people would describe as a masculine vanilla. It's definitely a genderless vanilla, whatever that means, you know, non-sugary vanilla, non-cake. It's more depthy. If you enjoy Ogiel, for example, you might like this one, although Ogiel is more realistic. This one is amped up by synthetics. So Ivory Root, I'm getting rid of you and I'm going to replace this with a more affordable vanilla. Although my favorite vanilla du jour is actually this one here by Maison Louis-Marie. This is called L'Etang Noir, number three from the line. And this is a fragrance oil. And I just love this during the summer. It's so easy. Just throw in your bag. Wore this a lot. The only thing is it has little particles in it because I've been rolling it on my skin. And I always think about that with oils. I'm like, ooh. What happens when you've been rolling it on your skin that many times? <laughs> but this is a lovely vanilla with nutmeg and cardamom. So it's a spicy vanilla, also one of those genderless vanillas, and I love it. And if you know one of the latest by Rito releases, I will leave it over here somewhere for you to check out. That's like the spray version of this. It's slightly different, but they are very, very similar. So I might also get that one to have on top of the oil for extra projection, extra pizzazz, so that's Ivory Root. I would still recommend it. If you can smell it on yourself after that two hour mark, then great. And if you have the budget for it, but you can get vanillas that are more budget friendly than this, that are just as nice in my opinion. So next, just to show you that I'm not bashing any particular brands from one of my personal favorite brands, Serge Lutens, we have Des Clous Pour Une Pelure. I just had to remember the name, it's so long. So this one I bought just a few summers ago, but I have not reached for it. And the reason is it is too linear for me. I love it. It reminds me of an Aperol Spritz. It's like cloves and orange rind in some sort of drink, alcoholic or not. And it's refreshing, really refreshing in the summertime. The color kind of scares me because I wear white in the summertime and, you know, do be careful with colored perfumes on your whites. So that doesn't really go together, does it? And I'm not going to spray it on skin because with this type of scent, I want it to project more. I'll more likely spray it on my arms or my sleeves. And I love it. I love, love, love this scent very much, but it's just too linear for me. At the end of the day, I, I'm bored of it. Like I, I can't wear this for too many hours at a time. Then it will have to be like in the morning and then I've changed my outfit and then, you know, like a holiday scent, you change your outfit and then you go to lunch and you're wearing a different type of scent after that. But I can't wear this all day, folks. But I love it. It's such a lovely tonic scent. If you're looking for a lovely tonic type of fragrance and you love that feel of that orange peel, rhymes, <laughs> then try out this one by Uncle Serge. I'm so sorry, Lutens. Still love the house. Okay, lastly, I'm gonna talk about one that actually breaks my heart that I do not reach for. It is Queer de Russie by Chanel. This is the original EDT, mind you. The original original is actually a lot older. It was brought back from the Chanel historic vault in the exclusive line, which is Chanel's exclusive line. These bottles just go up and up in price. This is the EDT. I think I could get a good coin for it. <laughs> So I'm going to get rid of it. This is one of the best leather fragrances out there. It is leather and birch tar, but yet smells classy, Chanel-esque, French and sophisticated. It's a marvelous fragrance, but I never reach for it. And I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So this will go to a better home because I am going to get 
some other exclusive probably. I've always had my eye on multiple exclusives. The two that I have are the EDT versions and I've been hesitant to buy the EDP because they switch from EDT to EDP. Usually Chanel's EDT offerings are nicer than their EDPs in my opinion. Uh, but we'll see what I replace this one with and yeah. Actually, I've been thinking about getting the Naomi Goodser Corpus Equus, which is another leather scent to replace this one. I find that one just a little bit more wearable to me. The leather is a little bit more lived in, but also more casual. This is, I have a hard time combining this leather with also being chic and it goes a little bit barbecue-y for me, like too barbecue, a, a bit too much like smoked meat when you combine that birch tar that is so heavy and smoky with that leather that is realistic. Yeah, it just goes a little bit too meaty for me, too realistic meaty for me. But somebody else must wear it because it is a fabulous, fabulous fragrance. Still highly recommend it. And that's it. The fragrance box is actually broken. I need to replace it with another one. These are the fragrances that I no longer wear, no longer reach for. Do share the fragrances that you guys no longer reach for or fragrances that you perhaps have bought that you loved and then it just ended up sitting on your shelf and collecting dust. Hashtag freakhead problems.